fifth graders, I am here to teach you language arts today. Yay, language arts. Okay, so you have learned a lot of the concepts already from the last two days with Ms. Ricard. So today I'm just going to review some of the stuff that she has already talked about and then review a practice book page that you were supposed to do on literary devices, um, review vocab and spelling, and I'm going to talk about what you're going to do with the story today. And I'm also going to talk a little bit more about grammar and um, just have everything that you need out. So your practice book, your big book, your big reading book, and maybe some notes if you want to take some more notes. Otherwise, let's get started. So again, I want to say that you do not have to learn these spelling words. However, I highly encourage you to learn them. It's always good to um, spell. It's always good to spell. We want to be able to spell. So just some words that are up here. Knowledge, lightning, hasten, need, rhyme, wreath. And just in case you're curious, my last name, which is Kranz, actually in German, that means wreath. Okay, just a little, little, uh, little information about me and my last name. So moving on, those are your spelling words. Now again, you do not have a test. You don't need to worry about them, but it's always good to learn how to spell these words because we want to be good spellers. We want to be good writers. And to be good writers, we need to be able to spell. So I highly encourage that you learn these words, but there will be no test. Okay, so then you have vocab words. So to review, gouges means that you do like a deep cut or you dent it in. Um, kind of like when you have a can of soda and you crush it, you're gouging it, you're making a dent in it. Okay, desolate is when you feel lonely and sad. Um, bustles, when you move in a busy, energetic way, like, you know what I tell you if you're in my class and you're kind of rushing around the classroom and I say, hey, slow down, it's because you are bustling around the classroom. Um, fervor, which is when you're like strong emotion and strong belief. Um, when we're talking about our faith, this is a really good word to connect to, to that, which is you're showing with strong emotion and you're showing your faith that you believe in God. Immaculate is something that is clean and tidy. Some of you guys may have really immaculate houses that are always clean, always tidy. Some of you may not. Maybe it's a little bit messy. Hey, to each its own. Um, assage, which is to guilt, is to make it less painful and troubling. Okay? So to make something less troubling, less grief, less painful, okay? Those are your vocab words. So now I'm gonna turn it to grammar. Oops. So Mrs. Ricard went over this with you guys yesterday. I'm just gonna do a really quick review of this because today's homework for language arts is to do a grammar page. So I'm first going to review past tense. So for most verbs, you add ed. So if I have reached, I have reached. Now if the word ends in an e, I just add a d. I don't add a second e, just like Mrs. Ricard said yesterday. I don't need ee, -E, I just need ed. Um, if it ends in a consonant and a y, so the N in deny is my constant, Y, I change the Y to IED. And then if it ends in a vowel and a consonant, so U, N, you double this final consonant and you add ED. So I have stun and stunned, okay? So again, an example are some of these down here. So everyone loves the little black cat. To make that past tense, I would say everyone loved the little black cat. 
Here, we worried about the cat. Here, I turned down the radio. And here, I would add ED. Here, I would change this to D. Here, I would say IED, okay, because I have that Y. You also learned with Mrs. Ricard about future tenses. And with future tense, you just add the word will, which is a helping verb to any verb. So let me show you that. So here, if I have the firefighter climb the tree, I would say the firefighter will climb the tree. So when you're doing your practice book page tonight or this afternoon or whenever you're doing it, and it's asking you to identify if it's past or future, remember past is you're looking for those Ds and future you're looking for will. They will do something or they did it before. Okay. And I also want to remind you about present tense, something that's happening currently. Okay, because your practice of the page includes past, future, and present, all three. So they'll give you a sentence and you will need to identify which one it is. So present is it's currently happening. So for instance, the earth goes around the sun. And that's happening right now. That's gonna be happening later. It's gonna be happening in the present tense. Okay, and I'm actually gonna show you your practice book page. Okay, so this is your practice book page. It's page 139. This first part, you are taking these and putting them in past tense. Okay, so it happened in the past. Um, for instance, she announces that the cat's health is excellent. How would I change that to make it in the past tense? Well, I'm thinking past tense, I would add a D. So she announced that the cat's health is excellent, meaning that she did it a while back. Okay, that's your first five. Now here's where present tense comes in on these bottom ones. So it says underline the verb in each sentence, then label each verb as present tense, past tense, or future tense. So looking at this, Molly lives in the city of Los Angeles. Does that have a D? Does that have the word will? If it doesn't have either one of those, then it's not past or future, then it must be, hopefully you answered with present, and that's what you'll write here. So make sure that you read the directions because it says to underline the verb and then identify what kind of verb it is, okay? The other thing that Mrs. Ricard talked about was imagery, our literary device that we're learning about this week which is, like I said, imagery, which is our five sentence, five senses. So sight, hearing, touch, um, taste, and smell. So you had to do a practice book page and it was page 137. So please open your practice book to that page and let's go over the answers. Okay, so Banjo was lost just a few moments ago. Ned and Banjo have been playing near the creek. Ned threw a ball and Banjo raced to catch it. Then just like that, he was gone. Yelling Banjo's name, Ned ran along the creek bed and through the park above it, crunching the red, gold, and purple leaves under his feet. He called Banjo's name again and again, but all he heard was the gurgling of the creek. It was cold. Ned's fingers felt like ice. It was getting dark and Ned trudged home, his heart as heavy as a stone. Even the familiar aroma of stew and the thought of his dad's delicious biscuits couldn't lift his spirits. He took a deep breath and told his parents the horrible news. 
Okay, so now it gives us chunks of the story and we need to be able to identify it. So if it says sight, or if it is sight, I would say sight. If it's something that they would be tasting, I would put taste. If it's something they'd be touching, I would put touch. If it's something they heard, I would put hearing and so forth. So let's see. So red, gold, and purple leaves, I'm seeing that with my eyes. I'm not tasting those leaves, I'm seeing them. Okay, the gurgling of the creek, that's something that I hear. The sound that the creek is making as it flows through the ground. Fingers felt like ice. So felt is a really good thing. I'm feeling it, that's touch. A familiar aroma of stew, and maybe you were unsure of aroma, but aroma is like this really nice smell. Um, that is really enjoyable. It's a smell. So if you hear or see the word aroma, you're going to put smell. Dad's delicious biscuits. Is that something that I see? Maybe, but in this case, I might go back and read the whole thing. Even the familiar aroma of stew and the thought of his dad's delicious biscuits couldn't lift his spirits, but that's something that he would taste, okay? He's not smelling the biscuits. You could maybe have put, maybe you saw the biscuits, I would see that, um, but they were really looking for you to put taste. Okay. okay, so possible responses are shown for these bottom ones, but you really should have this first part. When you see um, leaves changing colors, you're definitely thinking about fall or autumn. So in the fall, and then I know that because the red, yellow, and purple leaves on the ground show that the trees were losing their leaves. Okay, we should always think if something's losing its leaves, changing colors, then you're gonna go ahead and say that that is fall. Okay, and this one, the author says that Ned's heart was as heavy as a stone. What emotion does this image suggest? Okay, if, I, if I, my feet are heavy, and I'm like looking down and I'm trudging through the ground, I'm probably not happy. So it definitely shows that he is sad. So it shows sadness. Okay. Okay, I hope that that made sense. I hope that you got a lot of this right. If you're unsure, please let me know or let Ms. Ricard know or Miss, Miss Garcia. All right, so that's your literary device. You really don't have anything else um, like practice book page wise or anything on this. So make sure that you understand that you're talking about imagery, you're talking about sight, smell, taste, touch, hear. Remember that that's what you're looking for. Um, the last thing I wanna talk about is today in class, we would be partner reading our story, correct? Okay, so if you, um, forgot, well, let me tell you that today is partner reading. And what I'm going to encourage you to do is find somebody to read this story to, any small goodness. So that could be mom, that could be dad, that could be sister. Hey, maybe you read it to a stuffed animal. Hey, maybe you read it to your dog, but make sure you read it a third time, okay? Um, so you are reviewing everything today in language arts, like I just said and then your partner reading with somebody and making sure that you do page 139 for your homework and that you check this page that I went over. Let us know if you have any questions. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.